you for joining us today. We're going to get into some amazing material that I know is going to impact you and it's going to really help somebody. If you would, while you're watching this right now, please repost this, share this somewhere. Somebody's going to really benefit from the information that we believe will become a revelation for you today. Rick, thank you for being with me today. I'm so glad to be with you. Man, I, I just, um, we got to talking and we were discussing the topic of the apostle and uh, we've been teaching on it, you've been teaching on it, and we started discussing the prophet. Mm -hmm. And I want to go into that today. Do you think you know something about that? I try to know something about it. Tell us. Well, I learned it all from you. But... No, you did not. <laughs> well, I actually, uh, the, the office of the prophet is something that I believe, like you say about the apostle, that many people claim these titles, mm -hmm. and most of them are not. They're not bad people. Mm -hmm. They don't mean anything by it, but many of the people that claim certain titles are not. Mm -hmm. And it just comes from ignorance. Well, the body of Christ has a way of living in ditches. There you go. And when I was a kid, we lived in the ditch of not believing in apostles and prophets. If somebody had called themselves a prophet, we would have laughed our head off. Oh, or if somebody had called themselves an apostle, yeah. we would have said they were a lunatic. Yes. Because we just didn't believe in apostles and prophets. Yes. So now we've gone from the ditch of not believing in any of them, mm -hmm. clear over into the other ditch, yeah. where so many people are called apostles and prophets who are not. It's true. And I think many of them are just sincerely misled. Yep. They don't know what it really means to be an apostle. They don't know what it means to be a prophet. And a lot of people have a prophetic inkling or tendency. Right. They lean in that direction. That does not make them a prophet. Correct. But I think a lot of people misinterpret that and they say, well, I'm a prophet. And I think there are some people with a critical spirit. Yeah. Who just say that they're prophets and that somehow gives them the right to be critical. It's true. They get to say whatever they want because now they have the title, the magic stamp. Uh, for me, and not for me, actually, the way I read the Word of God, it says so clearly that, you know, that anybody can prophesy. Mm -hmm. We know that in 1 Corinthians 14, it says, eagerly desire the gifts, but especially that you might prophesy. And if you look at the end of 1 Corinthians 14, Rick, you know this, that at the end of it, it says, if all prophesy, those Two classes of people that come in, those that are uninformed or unbelieving, they enter that sphere where all could prophesy. And the result is the secrets of their heart are revealed. They are brought out into the light, so to speak. That happens for unbelievers and uninformed. And the uninformed, I believe, are those that don't know some revelatory things, meaning they don't believe in a spirit-filled persuasion. They don't understand certain things about the Word of God. They might just only know salvation, and that's it. But the spirit of prophecy that can come on any believer is something that can be desired, practiced, and grown in. So any person watching this broadcast right now could prophesy better than me or any person that has a title of prophet. And they can develop in it. But the gift or office of prophet, to me, is simple. It's a responsibility to a segment of the body of Christ or a people group or what God's assigned you to. Well, it's an office. There you go. And that's very different from just the simple gift of prophecy, yes. which I don't want to make sound like it's not important. Sure. But it's a simple gift of prophecy yes. compared to a prophet. Come on. And you, you can tell us about that, Joseph. <laughs> but you know, in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 11, it says, and he gave some. Yes. And that word, some, is repeated over and over in that verse. Yes. It means categorically, emphatically, which means... He really did give apostles. He really did give prophets. Yes, sir. And he didn't just give them for a brief period of time at the beginning of the church age. But verse 12 says, for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, verse 13, until, until we come into the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God under a perfect man. Well, we're not there yet. We're not there yet. And we're not going to be there for a long time. Right. And so we need all fivefold ministry gifts. It's amazing how people can be selective in what they believe in. Like I, I was a Baptist. We believed in the pastor. Mm -hmm. We believed in the evangelist. We yeah. believed in the teacher, but no apostles and prophets. None. How in the world could we do that? Didn't we make just, it. You would say, those two we don't believe in, mm -hmm. but the rest of these are okay. But we need all of them. Yes. And we need prophetic ministry today. It's true. We need it today because... There's, I believe there's an assignment to it. And there's something very specific about the office of the prophet that when they're called into it, I believe this is just a saying I have, Rick, and you know, we, it starts and stops with the Word of God. But I believe that apostles are chosen. 
I believe God says, you will go on this assignment. I'm going to put you in this area. This will be how it is. And I believe prophets are grown. And both could be said for the same. Both, both statements could be made for, the, for both offices. But prophets, it's almost like they get pummeled through life mm -hmm. so they can really begin to accurately do what the Lord tells them to do mm -hmm. and have a holy severity to what the Lord speaks to them. And they take it very, very serious. Where apostles are just position and, and a demonstration of what God's doing in an area and territory. But the, I just see such a difference between the gifts and offices, like you're saying. Well, apostles are also plummeted. Yeah, of course. I mean, they are too. But, of but the prophet is very different. Yeah. And that's why God often told Old Testament prophets, don't look at their faces. Wow. The, you know, just don't. That's true. You know, for years and years, I would never wear my glasses when I preached. Is that right? I understand. Because I didn't want to see people's reactions. Yes. I didn't want to be affected. And when you speak the prophetic word, you know, you can be very affected by how people respond to you. It's true. You, you nearly have to be brazen. You just have to decide not to see their faces, not to see their reactions. As a prophet, you're required to speak the word of the Lord. That's right. And the word prophet, can I go into it? Please do. It's the Greek word prophetes. Yes. Very important. The word prophetes, it's a compound of two words, the word pro and fame, fiemi. Yeah. And the word fiemi means to speak, which tells us immediately a prophet is one that communicates. It's a speaking gift okay. or it's a writing gift. But the word fiemi also means to shed light on a matter. Wow. Isn't that interesting? Very interesting. So a prophet is one who brings illumination. It can have a teaching aspect. Yes. But a prophet is going to shed light on something. Okay. But that prefix pro is very important and it carries four meanings. Number one, the word prophet profemi describes one who stands. The word pro means in front of. Okay. And a prophet spends time in front of the presence of the Lord. That's right. That's number one. Yes. He has nothing to say unless he's heard God say something. Come on. And if a prophet's out there just running his mouth yes. without hearing it from the Lord, he has already he's already made a tragic mistake. It's true. And so a prophet really spends more time before God than he does in front of people. Wow. But number two, the word pro also means before. Once a prophet has been in the presence of God and received God's message, then his gift is public. He stands before people. Very good. And as be, the man before people, he is to represent what he heard God say. Okay. The word pro also means on behalf of. Wow. When he stands there, he is not speaking on his own behalf. He's speaking on behalf of the Lord. And that's why it's so important that a prophet really sticks to what he has heard. And sometimes, and you know this is true, prophets hear something, and rather than just stick with what they know they heard, they then begin to kind of supplement and add their own interpretation to what they heard. Gainsay. And that's when they begin to make mistakes. That's right. And that doesn't mean they're false. They've just made a prophetic mistake. That's right. And so a prophet has to remember, I'm not here on my own behalf. I'm here to speak on behalf of the Lord. And then fourthly, that word pro carries the idea of something that is uh, predictive. It means in advance. Wow. And I watch you do this all the time. Prophets speak in advance of things that happen. So those four elements are very important in the word prophet. That is powerful. That is powerful. And a lot of people want to, for lack of a better, we were talking about Ephesians a little while ago in the church of Ephesus, how they would test apostles and do all this. A lot of people want to induce that. In the social media age, it seems as if they can get away with it mm -hmm. and they begin to do it. So order is an order. I, it's, um, I guess I don't know perfectly how to say this, but I'm going to try. I believe that a lot of individuals who are saying they're prophets are not, and they've not been tenured. They've not been brought into a place of surrender. I know in my own life, Rick, the Lord called us into a time of separation and we were really separated. We were submitted. We did what the Lord said to do, but he called me away for a season. That was very difficult. That's very prophetic. Is that right? There you were in the presence of God. You were called aside. Yes. It's true. He called us away and he said, I want, I want you to set everything down for a season. And he said, I'll bless this and your family and it'll be good. But I remember the day he came to me and spoke. And I mean, he spoke so clearly. He said, you know what I've called you to do. Now do it. I said, yes, sir. 
and it's how it is. And I think a lot of people get ahead of God that way, and that's why we have a lot of confusion in this space. People who are prophets also have different characters. They have a prophetic character. Okay. You definitely have a prophetic character. They're a little different. Yeah, I'm different. But I, I mean, I like your difference. <laughs> but that's because you've been set aside by God. Prophets see things that other people don't see. True. They feel things that other people don't feel. It's true. They resonate with the spiritual realm differently than other people. It's true. And they're just different. It's true. That's okay. It is okay. We all have our part. Can we look at something in Peter? Please help me. Yes. Let's go to Second Let's Peter chapter 1. Okay. In the New Testament times, there was a problem with false apostles and false prophets. Uh-huh. And the word false, again, is the same word that we saw when we were talking about false apostles. Yes. They're bogus prophets. Yep. They're pretend prophets. They're wannabe prophets. Yes. But often that they're not. Yes. But in the time of the New Testament, there really was a problem with false revelators. And there's that problem again today. There is a problem with that. And in the New Testament times, they were just making up lavish stories because with amazing, lavish stories, they could attract an audience. Mm -hmm. Well, what do we have going on today? More than ever. People coming up with crazy stuff. They've uh -huh. been to heaven. They've seen this. They've seen that. And you know what? They have not. Yeah. They just have overactive imaginations. Or bipolar disorder. Or That's correct. So when you come to 2 Peter chapter 1, Peter, who is an apostle, who believes also in prophetic ministry, mm -hmm. says this in verse 16. For we have not followed cunningly devised fables. Wow. He's talking about false revelators. Wow. And he's saying that they develop cunningly devised fables. Wow. And what's interesting is that they became Gnostics. Gnostics were people who claimed to have superior knowledge they said, we've been beyond the veil. We've seen what no one has seen. We've gone boldly where no one has ever gone before. And now we've come back from the other realm and we're going to tell you our stories. And the Gnostics literally based themselves and their style on the sophists. Oh, yes. You know who a sophist was? I do, yes. The sophists were entertainers who traveled the world. They sold tickets. They told mesmerizing stories. Right. And these preachers in the church begin to act like the sophists. And they, oh my goodness. they begin to build audiences with tales. Entertainers. And now Peter's dealing with that issue. Because just like false apostles affect the reputation of real apostles, mm -hmm. crazy prophets yes. affect the reputation of real prophets. You bet, yes. So now Peter says, For we have not followed cunningly devised fables. And then listen to what he says. When we made known unto you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but were eyewitnesses of his majesty. For he received from God the Father honor and glory when there came such a voice to him from the excellent glory, saying, This is my beloved Son in whom I'm well pleased. Mm. Verse 18, And this is the voice which came from heaven, which we heard when we were with him in the holy mount. Wow. Which is the equivalent of saying, If anybody has a story to tell, we have the real story. Wow. We were on the holy mount. We were there. We saw a cloud. <laughs> we felt power. We heard a voice. It was the ultimate camp meeting. I mean, all <laughs> the elements that people want to experience, they were all there. But notice what Peter says in the next verse. But we have a more sure word of prophecy. Come on. Now we're talking. He is literally saying, if I have to choose between my experience on the Man of Transfiguration and the Bible. Come on, Rick. My choice is already made. I'm taking the Bible over my experience. Every time. Isn't that amazing? It's amazing. And then he says, where, where unto you do well that you take it as unto a light that shines in a dark place. But notice this in verse 20. In verse 20 and verse 21, he tells us how real prophetic utterance comes and how it does not come. He says, knowing this first. The word knowing is a participle. Know it, know it, know it. Never forget it. Know this first. Yes. The word first, the Greek word proton, first and foremost. That no prophecy of the scripture Come is on. of any private interpretation. That's right. And those words, private interpretation in Greek, means no prophecy of the scripture was ever self-willed, mm -hmm. self-loosed, self-released. Yes which means a person can't just make up something. It doesn't right. happen that way. It does not. It does not happen no, that way. No, it does way. not. And then in verse 20, he, 21, he describes how it does happen. Okay. And this is a good description of you. Thank you, sir. 
For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man. There it is. Yeah. It's not self-projected. It's not self-loosed. Mm -hmm. But holy men of God spake as they were what? Moved. moved by the Holy Ghost. The key is that word moved. Moved. And that word moved is the same word which would describe current, which carries a branch or a leaf downstream. Yeah. That branch or that leaf can't move unless the current is moving. Wow. It's the same word which was used to describe ships of the ancient world who hoisted their sails because the ships could not move without wind. Wow. Well, here's the prophetic responsibility. Mm -hmm. Real prophets cannot prophesy at will. They yep. can't make it happen. Wow. But they spend time in the presence of God yes. where they hoist their sails. How wonderful. So that when God does have something to say, they will catch that divine movement. That's so powerful, Rick. And if anybody's just prophesying on their own, uh -huh. well, they're described in chapter 2. <laughs> Let's look at chapter 2. And in chapter but 2... wait, there's more. Chapter 2, verse 3 says, And through covetousness mm -hmm. shall they with feigned words... Feigned... Oh, wow. My Bible says deceptive. Guess what the word is in Greek? What? Plastos. What word do you think we get from that? Plastic. Plastic. Mm -hmm. It's those who at will just fabricate words or reshape or mold their words in such a way that it will benefit them and not the listener. And that's why it says, with feigned words will they make merchandise out of you, which means they're going to make up words that probably will prophesy money out of your pocket you into theirs. You bet they will. This is not genuine prophetic ministry. No, it's not. This is just plastic words. And the word merchandise here, the Greek word imporeomai, was the word used to describe marketers in the ancient world who were professionals at selling sham flawed products. This is great teaching. Is that amazing? It's amazing. And this verse is literally prophesying that at the end of the church age, there's going to be one category of people who will wiggle their way into the church, into the church marketplace. Wow. And with feigned words, they're going to begin to sell a bunch of bogus stuff to the church. Wow. Now, wow. And these will be individuals who just self-will, yep. self-project. Yes. But a real prophet's not going to do that. No. A real prophet will sit there and keep his mouth shut. That's right. Until he has caught the movement of the Spirit to speak. That's right. And you can see this all over the book of Acts. For instance, Agabus. Come on. Yes. Agabus came down from Jerusalem. Acts 11. And he came to the house of Philip the Evangelist. Yeah. Well, Philip the Evangelist had four daughters that... Prophesied. Prophesied. Yeah. Those were four girls that were prophets, mm -hmm. which means women can be prophets. Come on. Come on, Rick. Now, here's what's amazing to me. Paul had been in that house with those four girls for quite some time. Yeah. Those four girls never caught the wind of the Spirit. Right. To prophesy to Paul about his future. Never said a thing about it. But when Agabus showed up, and by the way, Agabus didn't come there because Paul was there. Mm -hmm. He came there because four prophets lived there. And you find that prophets always know where the other prophets are. That is fascinating. They're attracted to each other. That is fascinating. And prophets usually travel in companies. Yeah. Think how many people you know that are prophetic. My whole team. Prophets are drawn to each other. Yeah. So Agabus came there not knowing Paul was there because he came to see the four prophetic girls. I see. And when he came in, suddenly his sails were hoisted. Yes. And bam! He began to prophetically move the moment he moved in that house. And that's a good example of what Paul says in 1 Corinthians chapter 14, that if you're speaking, be quiet because something may be revealed to another. Mm. Those girls did not hear it. But when Agabus came in, they made room for Agabus, and Agabus began to prophesy by the Spirit. Come on, Rick. But anyway, in these verses you find how real prophetic ministry does not happen mm -hmm. and how it does happen. That is so profound. And it's simple. It's right here in the Word of God. I'm getting a major revelation as you're teaching this and how God wants to begin to unite and unify real gifts for the purpose of the gospel and bringing it forward. That is profound. Um, those of you who are watching, I know you're watching right now. You're taking in this information. I, I have... Man, I get moved, I get caught up in the Spirit as Rick teaches. And I don't know if you're experiencing the same thing I am. But I, as we're going through this, please, if you would, you want to get a hold of this book. 
Apostles and Prophets. Uh, it's by Rick Renner. You can get it at renner.org or any available place where books are sold. This is a profound book. Let's tell them what Lance Wall now said. He said you could use it as a life preserver. He said you could use it as a flotation <laughs> device. Flotation device. It's amazing. It's yeah. I want to say something about it too, Rick. Like one of the things that's a hallmark of your writings is that this book is not only like seven hundred and eighty pages, thirty. I think, I think so, something like it's that. It's huge, but it is packed with revelatory stuff. Each page in this book just goes into graphic detail of wonderful. Wonderful circumstances Thank you. that involve the apostle and prophet. You just do such excellent information for people. Thank you. I encourage you to get this. You need this in your library. Um, I had the great privilege of endorsing this book. You sure did. I I'm loved your endorsement. Oh man, Rick. I, you know what I thought when you sent me the manuscript of this? I thought you were saying, Joseph, consider this. You might need to check yourself before you wreck yourself. And I thought, well, I better read this. So I read the entire manuscript and I said, sir, I read it. And I didn't realize that you were asking me to help. Well, you're not going to wreck yourself. Yeah. Because your opinion of the Bible is what Peter said here. You've had a lot of experiences. Yes. But sir. I know that you always prefer the word. Always. Above your experiences. Always. And if you ever have anybody who says they're prophetic and they begin to describe things that cannot be substantiated by the Bible. That's right. It's okay for you just to move, move along. Move along. Move just along. move along. This book will help you move along. I encourage you to get it. Apostles and Prophets. It's just so good. Praise God. Thank you for writing it. You're welcome. At 17, you wrote it. The first version. The first version. Yeah. And God kept it going. I just encourage you to get this today. Rick, God has put such an anointing on you, your calling, your mandate. And I believe just by your teaching and what you're bringing so many like myself and countless others... I'm seeing what I call a right-sizing mm -hmm. in the prophetic, in the apostolic. It's been about two years, the Spirit of the Lord spoke to me that the apostles, the real ones, would step out and grab the wheel on the prophetic and right-size it on the road. It's like they're taking the prophetic from the drunken uncle mm -hmm. and they're right-sizing it on the road and steering it. And I want to thank you for that. And do you feel the Lord has been doing that through your ministry or are you just teaching the Word? Um. I never look at me as that I'm going to bring balance to something, but there have been several times in my life when the Lord has instructed me to address an issue. Oh, wow. But I'll tell you something else. Real apostles usually don't call themselves apostles. That's amazing. You don't have to. That's amazing. You don't have to. Yeah, title. You know, in Moscow, we have a ministry to elderly people. Yes. Thousands and thousands and thousands of elderly. And we bring in stars to perform. Yeah. And you know what we've learned? What? The easiest stars to take care of are the ones that are well known and famous. You say to them, what can I do for you? They say, I just need a cup of tea. They are so easy to accommodate. <laughs> but the wannabe stars? Oh yeah. Oh my gosh. They have to have this kind of food and they have to have this and they have to have this. <laughs> they have to have this. And you always know, okay, this is a wannabe. Yeah. But the ones that are the real thing. They don't need any of that. They know who they are. They know who they are. And there are so many comparisons to the spiritual realm. People who are the real deal, yeah. they're pretty comfortable with who they are. In their own skin. But people who want to be, yeah. it can get pretty silly. Well, you, you demonstrate that very well. Well, thank you. You do, sir. Thank you. So it's, it's, it's wonderful. I believe the Lord is bringing a right-sizing. I believe God is raising up the real thing. And, you know, I think it was... Um, I don't know if it was Spurgeon or one of them who said, the way you can tell a crooked stick from something else is just put a straight one next to it. You can simply just discover what is right and what is wrong just by being in the Word of God. Well, you know, even with counterfeit currency, they, mm -hmm. they teach you how to recognize the real yeah. by teaching the false, by knowing what is the by real. By teaching the real. If you look at the real, then when the fake shows up, you're able to say, hey, there, there's something wrong with this. Yeah. Just know the Bible. Know what the Bible know, says. Know the Bible. And that's going to answer most of your questions. One of the things that really that you bring to the forefront so well is a lot of people believe that it's just going to get better out there. It's going to get better and better and better. But when you know the Bible, it doesn't say that. No, it doesn't. It says it's going to get more difficult. It's going to get dark. It's going to get harder. And there's going to be more of these false voices that come up. But we don't have to worry about that. You have a great saying that says, this isn't meant, the things you teach are not meant to scare, mm -hmm. but to prepare. That's right. 
and then you just know where we're going. That's right. And I believe that's where we're going in the culture right now, where people who are saying, oh, no, it's this way, it's that way, and these voices saying it's going to be perpetually better. I promise you it's going to be better. It is not. It is not. That is not true. It it's is not. not going to be better. And the quicker you realize that, the sooner you'll learn what you're supposed to do in this season. Yeah. It's going to get dark, and it's already dark, but it's, it's dark. going to get darker and darker and darker. Mm -hmm. But hey, we're going to get brighter and brighter and brighter. Well, it says in Matthew 24, see that you are not troubled. That's right. No problem. This is Tuesday. It's a Tuesday. Normal in the kingdom of God. And I want to say to everybody, and I, what I mean by it's Tuesday, it's just another day of the week where we get to do the will of God. But let me say something about Renner.org and Renner Ministries. I encourage you to check it out. Here's why. Because right now, in the middle of a present evil world, in a dark world, I believe that God has raised up leaders such as Rick and Denise to bring a light in darkness, great victory to people that are willing to look for truth. If you're a lover of the truth and the word of God, you'll love Renner.org. You'll love Renner Ministries. I encourage you to check out Rick and Denise's information and all they have because what God has brought through you at this time has brought great hope to us. I know I've talked about this before, but I want to tell our audience about this. This is a story called Unlikely. And I like what you say about it, Rick. The title's great. This is Rick and Denise's personal journey. And I was so moved. Heather and I, we were, we were listening to this and you read it, the audio version, you read it. And we were going through this and we started to shout a few times and said, this has just so impacted us that at the end of this very long uh, uh, story, you get to the end of it and say, we can do anything that God's called us to do. You can. Yeah. I want to thank you. For this this impacted wow. us deeply thank you get a hold of unlikely it's a long audio it's a long book but you will be impacted when you when you get a hold of this can i say something to your audience please rick i love joseph and i love heather i watch them all the time and honestly we're skyping almost every day actually it's kind of unusual if we don't i'm deeply honored yes and i really believe in this ministry there's a lot of people out there calling themselves prophets some are some are not that's okay. It's always been that way. But when you find somebody that is the real deal, you need to stick with it. And Joseph is the real deal. And I have to confess, I love it when he goes to the whiteboard. Uh-oh. I love it. I love the look he gets in his eyes. I love it when he takes off. And I've asked you, yeah. so how do you do this every day? Every day you have something new. And the only way you can do that is if you're listening and you're spending time with the Lord. It's true. I mean, if you're not, it's like we said, if you're not in the presence of the Lord listening, you don't have anything to say. It's true. And so I want to thank you for spending the time to be before the Lord so that then you can stand in front of us, speak on behalf of the Lord. Oh, thank you. And then sometimes speak very much in advance of events. I really pr I appreciate you. Thank and I appreciate you, your balance, how you always bring it back to the Bible. Thank you. Well, it's, uh, I'm very honored by that, and thank you, sir. I, I, your, your influence on this ministry, I don't think I'm... Heather will know that she's on set right now, but it's no secret in my ministry that if it wasn't for uh, Rick Renner, uh, this ministry probably would not be doing what it's doing. So thank you. Well, thank you, but that's too much. But it's thank, not too thank much. You. It's true. It's because the Lord has put a word on you guys, and I've taken it very serious. So thank you for all you've done. Thank you. I love you so much. Mr. Z. <laughs> Praise God. Well, those of you who are watching today, uh, please check out Rick and Denise Renner. They're just um, some of our dearest friends that we love and admire. And uh, I run everything I do through the grid of what Rick teaches. It's for me personally, I do that. I encourage you to consider doing the same. It's a healthy ministry. It's teaching you can trust. Go to renner.org. And have you noticed we have two things in common? Oh, yeah. Action hero haircut. That's right. <laughs> this haircut has saved the world many times in cinema. Yeah. Action because you don't get in people's way? I guess so. You're more aerodynamic. I started losing my hair when I was 17. When I was writing that first version of that book, my hair was Well, on. then this is a prophetic moment. I think it's a blessing. It doesn't take any time to deal with it. No. We travel well. It's easy. it's easy. And just wear black. Just wear black. Yeah. And you're dressed for the day. Praise God. Well, Rick, thanks for being here. It's been good to be here. I love you so much. I love you too. Those of you watching, please share this, repost this. Thank you to our partners and friends. We love you. Jesus is Lord. And we'll see you again very soon. Bye, everyone. 
Well, I am so glad you joined us today. You know, we have a lot happening in this ministry and it's because of monthly partners that helps us continue reaching people by the millions. Currently, we have a project and it's called the Diamond Air 62 Project. Affectionately, we call it the Red Eagle One Campaign. This aircraft can take up to seven people. We can travel anywhere in the nation and as mandates get stricter and the times get more and more difficult, we believe we will have our own ability to travel and be a blessing to people all over at no cost to them. I encourage you to become a partner today. You can do that by going to josephz.com or you can text the keyword GIVE to 719-259-0029. If you partner today, you're going to find that there is a great partner care in our ministry that will reach out to you. They will love you. Different team members will be contacting you. They'll pray with you. They will prophesy to you. They're just going to love on you. And I got to tell you, our partner care is wonderful. These guys love you and they're looking forward to talking to you. Another thing I want to say to you is please consider signing up for our email list. You want to sign up so we can stay in contact because we're building new platforms all the time. If the social media becomes more stringent or difficult or maybe you just can't find us, if you sign up for our email list, it'll be a tremendous blessing for you and for us and we can stay in touch and you can find where we are all the time. Thank you so much for watching today. Jesus is Lord and I want to say a great thank you to the partners and friends of this ministry. Together, I think we can change the world.